everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. But today we're doing something a little different, but it's not something we haven't done before, but it's been a little while, at least for the both of us. Marco has done these periodically, and that is a book review. Now, it is true, I read tons and tons and tons of mysteries, and maybe as much as two or three a week sometimes, but I haven't had time to do that. But anyway, this is a Goosebumps book. It is a Slappy World series book, and it is called Night of the Squawker. Is that right, Marco? And um, How do you make a squawking sound? I have no idea. Make and a squawk. There's a, the picture, there's a picture of a bird on the cover. Is that a squawking? Cover. I guess so. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> it, whenever I hear the word squawk, I think of chickens. So I don't know. But anyway, uh, I don't know if Marco will post a picture on the, what do you call it, the thumbnail picture? The, the YouTube the YouTube thumbnail picture of the book. The Maybe video. you could do that. I don't know. But uh, then you can see what's the bird that's on the cover. So I just want to say these Slappy World books are, well, at least the last two, because I can't speak about all of them. Um, it's kind of like a Tales from the Crypt episode where you have a narrator who is Slappy and he kind of introduces the story and then they tell the story it has nothing to do with him or any puppets at least not this story and then he'll come in in the middle uh, maybe a couple of times and he'll make a comment about what's going on you know and he'll laugh his little evil laugh and then at the end he comes in he kind of seals the deal and sums it up. He and seals the deal. Seals the deal, sums it up, and uh, that's the end of the story. But there's no slappy in the story <clears throat> in, the t in terms of telling a story. There's no slappy. There's no puppets. It has nothing to do with that. There's he's no just puppets. He's just like uh, from the, the Crypt Keeper, and he's the narrator. He's like a very flamboyant Crypt Keeper. Yes. He's... he's yeah, but that makes sense. He's a different kind of a figure. He's a puppet. Really? So and uh, Safi is it is a dummy a puppet? Yeah, they really. Yeah, they do things with his mouth. They have a little thing inside his mouth. I thought that that worked oh. his mouth, and uh, it's hard to say because you know in all the the stories they really have they have uh, short, very very short people dress up as slappy and you know or they have a puppet so anyway um so marco do you want to start and talk about the story well i guess so well so first off this is another book where i just have to question you know it's called slappy world and you, you'd expect not not for slappy to be a part of the story but you'd expect for his commentary to be a little bit more meaningful because every he comes in like twice or so and and he just says like I already know what's going to happen everything's going to turn out terribly or is it and that's all he really does he doesn't really give very to me important like commentary to what's going on he doesn't say like, oh, I've I've dealt with uh, birds like this before, and I know all about them, and I blah 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 blah. He just says like, I know exactly what's gonna happen, and you guys are gonna enjoy it or not. Like it's like okay, like cause I'm just imagining too, if a kid reads this book in print form. Are they really going to get very much enjoyment out of reading themselves, uh, the slappy parts and, you know, just kind of these like kind of generic uh, talking points that he uses? Well, do they even have that in the book? Yeah. They do. Well, I don't have yeah. how, how does that work? It has like a break and I guess it'll say like slappy 
or something. I don't know. I, I and, don't know why they would have. To me, that would be more of a performative thing. No, it's it's in the books. That's why it's huh. Slappy World. Oh. And so I really have to question that. And I think, you know what? It's probably good that he's ending this series and that he's going to start a new one. Uh, because I think that, to me, the whole, the, the weakest part of this book is just the slappy part. Like, all the rest of the book is good, and then you get to these slappy parts, and it's like, what? <laughs> it's not It's not like a big part, too. It's just like two small parts. But still, it, it just makes you think, this book would be probably better if you just cut those parts out. And just yeah, I, I, but I see. I just thought it was a performative thing, so they only would do that for the audio tape. No, that is why I didn't even think about it. So, but uh, no, I don't see how it would work in writing. I mean, it, actual reading it. I mean, that's the whole the draw. Page. That's supposed to be the draw is that Slappy is telling the story, and uh, he's commenting on it. But the thing is, is that. Mm. He's not really telling the story, no, and he's, he's, not. he's not really commenting on it either. The narrator so. is actually the boy <laughs> who is, I would say he's a could be like a junior or senior in high school. I'd say he's probably a sophomore or junior, and uh, he is the narrator, and uh, he, he has a sister, and they, they have parents, and... Uh, that's the, that's the, those are the main characters, plus you have a few friends of his in the story. Yeah, he's got Denzel. Yeah, that I thought that was interesting because all I could think of was uh, Denzel. the actor. Denzel. Because who's named and, that? I don't know. I've never heard that name before except for an actor. Although I, there was somebody in my school named Denzel. Oh, okay. But then actually there was a hilarious... I wonder thing. if he's named after the actor. No. Because the actor is... Well, he was black as well. Hmm. So it... it I bet I, it's named after him. I don't think so. But it was a funny time where we were in that, that shitty, horrible reading class with, you know, you know, mm-hmm. Mrs. Uh, not, not the one that you're thinking of, but, you know, Mrs. Outsiders. Oh. And... Uh, we were reading A Christmas Carol as a play, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, okay, we've already heard this story a million times, but let's just read it again anyway, but as a play. Mm-hmm. And there, it got to a part where there was, <laughs> there was a really funny uh, uh, sounding uh, name, and it would only be funny to, like, a middle schooler. And so Denzel... And I were the only ones laughing. And so then <laughs> Mrs. Outsiders told us that we had to stay after class so she could give us a detention for laughing <laughs> at the at the reading of the play. And so and so what we did was we just didn't stay after class at all and we just left. And she never gave us any detention. And she can go fuck herself. Well it's stupid. Yeah. But that's that your was your school but that particular school was that that was a a crappy a, a laugh with Denzel. <laughs> That's funny. Well, he I'm sure he was named after the actor. That actor's been around uh, long enough for him to be named after. Him. Like oh no, you're you're laughing at something. That means you deserve a detention. <laughs> like, oh God. That's what you call a. Uh, well, there's a lot of things that be called. I don't want to say, and it wouldn't be polite, and you would be shocked at what I could really come up with. So I'm not going to do it. That school, I'm not going to say the name of it, but it was. It's a bane in everyone's. You know what? Uh, well, that's just so. the most notable story of Denzel. Oh well, I. It's a nice name. It just. I, I, every time I heard the name, I was thinking of. Uh, is it Denzel Washington? Denzel. I I I I, I just saw him. He's in a movie, he and they, they, it's a black and white movie, 
And it's a new movie, it seems like. And I'm yeah. like, what is this? I don't know. And yeah. I don't yeah. like that. I don't know why it's in black and white. You it's know, in, what, you know, know what Denzel did, Safi? No. He gave Will Smith a hug after he slapped Chris Rock. He's like, I need to go comfort Will Smith because he's the real victim here. No. So I, I need to go give him a hug and tell him everything's going to be okay. Well, I, I don't think Mr. He, Smith. I don't think he's as bad as what your his motives were as bad as what your yeah I heard that. He and gave him I a thought big he was hug. trying to encourage him and say you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. I anyway, let's not get into that. That's Denzel. That's, that's a year ago. It's Denzel. I I think he's a, a really good actor. It's and, Denzel. And uh, we're the same age too. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is that it was weird because I felt like he obviously purposefully named somebody Denzel after Denzel because the, the whole story is how there's this kid and he likes to make movies and he's making a zombie movie. With Denzel. With Denzel, <laughs> which is funny, I guess, because Denzel Washington would never be in you know, Night of the Living Dead. No, I can't see that either. He It would be too much for him, even though he has been in some corny movies, like, uh, you know, movies that, you know, they're just, they're not as, like, serious as they 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 seem like they're trying to make themselves out to be. But he has been in a lot of really serious, really good movies, so. Yeah, because he's Denzel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the main character. Okay, now we're back is, to the book. Is Cooper. Cooper, which is a cool name. Uh, of course, like Cooper's Hawk. Yeah, Cooper's Hawk. <laughs> and, and for some reason, R.L. Stein is good at writing stories about birds, because I think that out of all the short stories that I've read of his, probably his best short story. Or the second best one was one where this family goes to stay at this bird resort and it's themed after birds and it's really creepy and the management seems creepy and then all of a sudden the management is like, you know, we we know that you don't like birds, uh, so, you know, how about uh, we... we uh, pay you back for having to suffer here <laughs> by uh, turning your whole family into birds and then having a cat uh, eat them. And so then I think that's what happens or something. And it was a really good story. It was uh, A+. Plus, and, but for some reason, he's good at writing stories about birds, hmm. which is well, weird. Well, maybe. Well, you know, some people are very afraid of birds. Like you? No, I was a falconer, my God. I It was funny because I've been in two situations. I thought about that when I was reading it. Uh, when I was a little kid, I was in, at Na- in Nassau, and I stood in the middle, and they called all these flamingos to come flying at me, and they they just landed like right around me and circling me to show uh, how that they were trained. And I just like, oh, this is nice. And it didn't even phase me. And then later on in life, when I was older, and I was actually a falconer, uh, a fellow falconer of ours had was at a uh, place, and he was demonstrating what he does with one, one of his hawks. And um, so he had his leather glove on, and the hawk was flying free. And the hawk was a little bit hungry because that's what you do when you do falconry. And he put food in his uh, fist and his leather glove. And he was trying to get the hawk to come over to his his fist. Well, anyway, the hawk landed on top of my head. And it didn't, I'm just like, well, I I hunt with hawks, so I'm not, wasn't bothered by it. But he was so grateful that it was me instead of somebody else because some people would have freaked out. And then that would have freaked out the bird, and uh, because they're scared, it's a phobia. Some people are scared of birds. It's just like monk being afraid of milk and all that stuff. Well, some people are afraid of birds like that. So, 
anyway, uh, I think that's why he probably does a good job with uh, bird stories. Because some people are really afraid of them. They don't understand them and they get scared. He's good at writing them, though. Like, yeah, well... The, why is it that, like, he, he can't bother writing a good uh, story about something else, but then when it comes to birds, it's like he can do anything. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say that, because... Well, I was trying to figure out how he came up with the story, and but, you know, really... Uh, well, I would say, to me, the the best thing about the book was that it felt like it was a vampire story, but told in the perspective of replacing vampires with birds mm. and so you know it starts off and uh i can't remember they're like uh, going fishing or they're gonna go fishing and then it gets to where the, uh, the sister the young sister gets bitten by a bird somehow and then they take a bird back Which home birds don't have teeth so that was another thing i <laughs> it reminded me of another thing where we we had a hawk and he was in the backyard and i don't want to i can't explain everything he has he they had these leg bracelets which we were required to have by law called jesses and then there was a little uh grommet leather piece attached to it and through it went a rope and uh he had a house, and it was a six-foot-high house, and he flew up and down. Well, anyway, somebody came, and they had a knife, and they cut through the rope, and they stole him. And the policeman came and said, oh, he must have chewed through the rope. And I'm like, excuse me? He doesn't have any teeth. So they said this in the book. She got bitten by the bird, like, huh? Yeah, the bird sank his teeth into her. <laughs> the bird doesn't have any effing teeth and has a beak. So, I mean, because this wasn't a special bird that had magical teeth. It was no, just okay. a bird with a beak. But maybe it was just a form of expression for uh, he, he, he pecked at her. She, yeah. Um, but as I was saying, it's like she gets bitten by a bird and then they act like she's becoming a bird the whole rest of the book, and oh no, it's horrifying. Uh, but then obviously there's twists at the end. Uh, but the majority of the book is basically this brother trying to make a zombie movie uh, while dealing with his sister. And the thing that I liked was that the sister wasn't horrible, like Tara from Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't so much focused on like oh she's a terrible sister and she's evil and no, and all that all. it's just like she's a typical younger sister character and she's also turning into a bird and it was it was pretty funny too i mean there are a lot of funny moments yeah a lot of uh just bizarre wtf moments and, and, I, and I, that was good I, I thought they were really good really but just let me say this when she got quote bitten uh her she was screaming and he was screaming and the parents came they were fishing it was a favorite thing to do they came there and uh you know so they they take her there's a bird there and it's uh she likes to take care of animals and so they let her take the bird with with her even though it quote bit her and but the father I guess carries it. But anyway, mm -hmm. as they leave, the boy looks at the uh he sees a sign and it says Experiment experimental area, do not feed the birds. But <laughs> um. they never talk about that again. <laughs> and so I thought what was gonna happen in the end, they were gonna go back to this area and they're gonna find these research people and they're they were gonna get the ant you know, get a uh a remedy or something for her you know I have no I was really curious that's which is really good because that shows you know you're really it's such a good story you know for goosebump book you're invested in it. you're invested and that you uh, are looking forward to the ending because I'm like how is he going to end the story 
and they never talk about that and again. That, that never. It's never brought up at no, all. And, and I like, just, not even the fact that, oh, experimental birds, experimental nothing. Like, yeah. that's never brought up again. It's like... And he looked up the little, <laughs> the boy who knows how to use the internet proficiently, he knows looks up it. and can't find the bird anywhere. They can't find it any... No... no uh, no record of it. No, he put the he had photographs of it. He'd take photographs of it on his phone, and there's no record of it. And so you, so you're really wondering, like, is this a doctor? You know, what, what's that scary story with the uh, and Doctor Moreau, the island of Doctor Moreau? Yeah, and have all these creatures he's put together. So I was thinking maybe it's something like that. Yeah, because like even the cover. Isn't the the cover is a little bit like false advertising? Cause well, it shows is, a small kind of bird. It is, looks small. And is there ever a part in the book where like there's a bunch of flames and there's a fire and the bird flies out of the fire or no, something? Like, cause no, I don't remember that. Like, no. I thought maybe at the end they'll go to the experimental zone, and then maybe there will be a big bird. It'll be like a giant monster bird. They'll have to fight it off or something, and then it'll make the experimental place explode or something. Like, I really, I was expecting for something like that to happen, but I didn't really care as much because it was all meant to be a red herring. You know, it, even though something weird was going on, it was all still somehow a red herring. I, I like, still don't, I just wish they wouldn't have put, put that in there. Because it, to me, it has nothing to do with the story. But you had to because if they didn't, then, you know, the whole book where she's turning into a bird, that you'd have to ask, well, how is she turning into a bird? Did this regular bird bite her and it, it turned her into a bird? Like, they had to at least put in experimental zone, don't feed them. Because that could say, oh, well... She obviously got bitten by the bird, and he sank his fangs into her and spread his bird virus to her. Well, I was thinking and... about that, too. It was something like, they do have this thing that's been going on, but I'm not sure where it is, where it's coming from, how it's spread, but some kind of bird flu or bird virus. But don't ask. I don't know anything about it in detail, but... There's been, and I was thinking about, well, maybe he got, but the the thing is, that's another thing about the cover. The cover is not reflective of the size of the bird that they are talking about. It's a, it's a, it's a nice looking cover though. Like, oh, it is. It's very colorful it, and pretty, but it is, it, it looks more like a small parrot. Yeah, we and could, we could rank the covers. The cover, the, this, but the, 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 they talk about something that's huge like three feet tall or something like a huge yeah like an eagle or there's some kind of thing on the um youtube i see it every so often it's this bird has kind of like like a duck beak and it's like really tall and big it's from another way far away country don't ask me where because i mean i've only seen this a a couple of times is it from harry potter no this is a real bird from hogwarts it's it's like a big duck it's just what it looks like, and then there's another wor- uh, another uh, bird that's really big, that uh, is dangerous, a cassowary or something like that, and can rip you apart. Really? Yes, and it's really big. So anyway, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of a bird. So I mean, these are these are way far away, and we don't have them around here. Well, I I'd, I'd, zoo or I'd like to go take a picture with one, well, and oh, and brother. and go like. Well, it's just... <laughs> well. Anyway, they the the cover bird is not reflective. It's of tiny. The, the sizes. It it looks that like they a, talk about. It's like a little. Uh, of course, then again, it could be another thing where the person doing the cover is not told what happens. Well, I think or they how big have, the bird is. Because and, what they could have done, they could have had a they could have put a kid on the cover, and the bird. Probably the sister because she's younger, and she's like eleven or something. We see this all the time, Sophie. I mean, and they do a relative size 
comparison on the cover. We see this all the time in Goosebumps covers where the covers are are one way and then the books are another way. And like it I I don't even know like it's weird like what details the artists are given and what details they aren't given because the way that it is, it's like, how did they ever get any cover right at all? Like, when they did the Monster Blood covers, were they told that it was green? Because, like, all I don't know, it's, it's really weird. Like, I think probably the worst example is Bad Hair Day. Because mm-hmm. they show that rabbit on the cover. The rabbit doesn't come in until, like, the last five pages of the book. <laughs> and... Really, it should have been showing something else as well. So, really weird with the covers. But I, but, but, but the only reason I it's a good this, cover though. I like I the know. cover. Well, the only reason why I bring it up is because they talk about the size of the bird constantly. Yeah. And the, they do it in terms of, you know, it's flying at, to, at the girl's head, it's swooping down, it's uh, I mean, they it just seems huge, like a big uh eagle or something which they're huge and i mean you have to lift weights to be able to put a have an eagle on your glove i mean it's just they're they're gigantic and anyway so but they that that's why i bring it up just because they talk about it constantly in all the action all, all these action scenes they talk about the size and what it's going to do and he's having a fit he's scared to death about a sister and so anyway well I was, I was expecting for a lot more of like you to criticize like how they took care of the bird or something like the the way it was written because it seemed like that I don't know like they had this huge bird in her room the sister's room and it was squawking all night long all every night well they had a big and, cage for it I thought and that if you you know if you have a wounded bird you can't let it run around it's um well you know what i mean they do if you've seen buster the uh, cockatoo or whatever it is on buster. youtube he walks around the house constantly and he can fly to limited flying i guess but um um you they were talking about a hurt's leg, and I don't know how, and having to have a splint, which indicated to me that it was broken, which I don't know how they would know that. I mean, unless they knew, I guess the parents knew about birds. It sounded like, really, that they knew about all animals, but then we come to find out something else. Well, let's just talk about the fact that the sister, she's going crazy, she was like pecking at the ground, <clears throat> and there was some real. There was a really funny scene with that too, where, well, just really funny scenes in general, where they're shooting this zombie movie, and then all of a sudden <laughs> she'll start doing something really weird, even though she's already supposed to be a zombie, but then she d- she goes the extra mile and starts doing something really weird, like pecking at the ground. And they get it all on camera, and it's just really hilarious. It's like, this is a, it it could be like a really dark subject matter, but the way it's treated is really funny and not too dark and serious. And there's another hilarious thing where they're like, wait a second, we're supposed to have four eggs. And then one of them's missing, and it turns out, She's sitting on it at the the dinner table, and it's just really like, uh, I guess she's turning into a bird, and then he starts turning into a bird too. Well, uh, because after, he got attacked. Yeah, his, his by her. His sister bites him, which again, like a vampire story. She he was trying to take the bird away because he thought it was dangerous and he wanted to get rid of it. And he was going. He was trying to sneak it out of the house, or let it, no. He's gonna. He let it out the window, and uh, she had a fit, got mad at him, and she bit him. Yeah. After he took off his gloves, he was all prepared, because he was afraid that the 
this is so queer to say that bird is biting. I it's almost drives me nuts. But she she pecked at him with her beak. Yeah, and so with her uh, human and she beak. drew blood, and on his hand, and so all of a sudden after that, he starts experiencing some changes. Yeah, some some big changes, and for instance. There's a really gross scene that is very... I mean, R.L. Stein also knows how to write gross stories because it, it, they had a scene that was straight out of Go Eat Worms. Uh, well, kind oh, of God. How gross that book was. See, Safi, just imagine that, but 200 pages. That's Go Eat Worms. Oh. Uh, the main kid, he goes to the refrigerator because he's hungry and he gets these worms that they didn't use for fishing, and he eats them, and he's like, mmm, that's really good. And he describes in detail, like, every single one he eats, or he'll get a couple, and yeah. have one, and He's really dangling good. it, dangling it uh, over his mouth, like, ah, and he's like, at first it, it tasted kind of tangy, and then it tasted kind of salty. <laughs> <laughs> it's really gross. And what do you know? It turns out that the parents are experimenting on themselves and their kids. Which, and the, they said they were scientists all the way through, but it didn't sound like that they were bird scientists, that they were just animals in general. I guess they're they're evil scientists. That's the correct term, and like evil scientists, they can just do whatever they want. Like, they can make, I don't know, your mom, or something. Like they they can do anything, and they say that like oh the whole time we've been turning you into birds and we're turning into birds too, because we've been taking this special juice, this power juice. And because the whole book, they were talking about this health juice that the dab would mix up. And you just thought like, oh, this is some sort of a R.L. Stein quirk for a character. You know, like how in some books the parents will make some weird foods or there will be some specification with food. But no, the juice is turning them into birds and they have been turned. And that's how the book ends. And I really think it was a great ending because it was totally unexpected. Yeah, very unexpected. It's weird because you're thinking, well, these are terrible parents. <laughs> but they're not throughout the book. They're really nice. And they have a good sense of humor and... Yeah, like they're, they're not supportive of their kids. They're not like typical goosebumps parents, you know. They're they're pretty uh, average American parents. They're a lot better than Ward and June. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Anybody turned? I mean, the children didn't have any say in whether they wanted to be turned into birds or no, not. I'm, I mean, up to that point, like oh, until okay. until you found out, like. You know, Ward and June, they would, they're, I think that they would have done that as well, though. Like, they're, they're pieces of shit. So. I don't say that, but it was just the, it was just the times. On season two, they are. And seasons one and three, they're, they're a lot better. Uh, But I thought it was a great ending. The ending was probably the best part of the book because it was the part that finally advanced the plot, you know. And, and not that it's a bad thing necessarily, but a lot of Goosebumps books, they'll just start one way, and it's like a flat line, and it never really goes anywhere. It's like, okay, we're just going to kind of do the same things over and over until the ending where there's a twist. That was kind of like what this book was, you know? There wasn't any progression of like, okay... Let's find out what type of bird this is. Let's go to the experimental zone. Let's uh, kill the bird and dissect it. I don't know, like, something to advance this plot and figure out what's going on. No. They just kind of sit there, observe this zombie virus, thing, which I thought that that was cool, the way that 
they're making this zombie movie, and at the same time, their parents have infected them with a bird virus well, to the, turn them into birds. Well, another thing that happened that is almost Make them really, squawkers. Uh, it's an aside, and that is they... Um, he decides, oh, well, my sister is turning into a bird, and he decides, I can make a great horror movie about my sister. Instead, oh, instead yeah. forget about this yeah. zombie movie. Well, and he, so he tells his friend and Zell, and so he does make a, a couple of <laughs> you know, videos of the things that are happening, and, you know, they can edit everything, and they get erased. Do you, th- you know, do you know who did it? Do you think it was her or was it the maybe the parents after what we It was the out? parents. Yeah. Which is weird cuz you'd think wouldn't the parents want like scientific observational videos like wouldn't but they, they want to have control over but them? They could you could have at least shown them at the end looking at the videos and then deleting the original copies like they could have you know you could take a video camera export those files to the computer and then delete the original ones on the camera and then they would have the videos for themselves I don't know that was a little uh, quiet it was a sudden ending too like it was like the ending was the best part and I, I really think they could have shortened the beginning a little bit and they could have extended the ending a little bit but other than that, like, I thought it was a pretty good Goosebumps book. I, I did, too. It's way better than the last couple that we've read. Yeah. You know, that one where the the kid went to space and he danced around. And then the one where Slappy can't get the kid scared. Like, both of those books are garbage compared to this. Yeah, this is actually a really good story. I mean, it's a little... it's. It's pretty thought out. It's like pretty this. long. Well, I mean, at least the audio long. book. The audio audio book was over three hours. It, it was three whole hours, and what I had to do was, was I fast forwarded the the speed. I put it at one point twenty five speed because I just I was like I'm not I'm not listening to a three hour Goosebumps book. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's like two books and one or something so, so anyway i give the book a b plus yeah that sounds about right i would give it a, a b plus too i just uh that part about the area experimental experimental area i didn't like it's pointless I, I just wish they'd left that out i because i because i think unless he had thought he was going to end it in a different way and so he left it in I don't know. Or like you said, is a red herring, but I that kind I of thing is a red very herring. good red herring. I didn't it, because uh, especially since it was bolstered by the fact that he the boy looked on the internet and couldn't find any bird that looked like that one, and so I'm thinking, oh, it's the island of Doctor Moreau, you know, not really. But. I think that he could though because even with animals and creatures that don't exist you can look up online uh you know there's plenty of weird creatures that people have found like there's a very famous one that people have found on a a beach in the new york air i think uh, around that area and they keep on finding these monsters on the beach and they look like like part chicken, part raccoon, part something else. And people mm. find those and they post tons of pictures and they're like, what the hell is this? I haven't heard and, of that. Yeah, you did. You watched Jesse Ventura Conspiracy oh, Theory. God, this is such a long time ago. And, they, and, and what do you know? That Plum Island probably uh, cr- creates those monsters. Plum Island. And then they, <laughs> they kill the, the ones that suck and then they wash up ashore. And so, but what I'm saying is, like, you could probably find that bird somewhere. Like, there are so many creatures that people talk about finding and seeing and encountering, like Bigfoot, Amityville Bigfoot, <laughs> Amityville Mothman, <laughs> Amityville Cryptids. And you could, you could find those creatures online. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like, the in- this is a 2001. Like, you can find stuff on the internet as long as it's it's good. I guess. So, anyway, uh, we both gave it the same review, B+. And uh, I don't know who wants to check this book out. Uh, what kind of person would like to do that? I don't know. A person? I mean, uh, it's just, it's a, I, I, I would recommend it unless you're disturbed that the parents would do something like this. I would go so far as to say the book needs a sequel. Or, no, a, 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 a squawk wall. A, a, a squeak wall. A, a squawk wall. Well, that's, that's another thing. And, oh, and the father says, too, at the end, like I said, they're scientists, and they've developed this formula, and they don't know anything about the bird. They say the bird it has nothing to do with what's happening to them. And so there's another thing that's yeah. kind of weird and mysterious. The bird's pretty weird. That um, they have no idea what this bird is. And they said that it has nothing to do with the changes that are happening to you. It's the stuff that we gave you. Yeah, we've, we, been, we've been giving you the juice. We've been juicing you up. <laughs> And the kids are just like, what the... Now, they're not happy. Uh, it's like, that's really creepy. It's like It kind of reminds... Creepy. To me, it's almost like a metaphor for kid, for parents who force their kids to become transgender. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. Don't, don't yeah. do that now. Yeah, Please don't true. do that. No, it's not. It's true. And it, to me, I think it's a perfect metaphor. But I really think this book needs a sequel. Because I I feel like you could do a part two where all these things get resolved, or at least you just go, get more into it. And then I really want him to finish his movie. Because he's like, I want to make a zombie movie. He doesn't even finish his movie. Oh. And so I really think they should do a sequel. He finishes the movie. They resolve all the issues. They go to the experimental zone. They throw the parents in a fire pit, <laughs> and, and then the book ends with just the main kid and his sister squawking at the camera. Yeah, well, I don't know what he's going to do about all his friends. If he, I mean, if they all turn into real birds, where they don't look human at all, that's another thing. How far is it going to go? Are they going to just look completely like birds? Because they do have... They talk about them having feathers, but they're kind of covered up with clothes, and um, they don't talk, say anything about any beak, although she, he got, she, but she could have bitten them with her teeth, but still, if she was infected, then uh, she did have teeth to bite him with, and so that would infect him. So, but that had nothing to do with it. Like I, we said, it was what the father had given him. So anyway, if you like this uh, audio pack, cast, uh, please give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers because we always welcome new subscribers to share uh, thoughts about what we talk about and what they would like and what you would like to talk about. So goodbye, everybody. Bye.